Ladies and gentlemen, everyone who has died to Sky Toss and has no idea what the fuck to do, this is for you. Neuro's super easy way to annihilate a Sky Toss player. And when I've been asking people in the chat how you're supposed to respond to someone who you have identified as going for Sky Toss, I would say about 85% of people have the wrong idea. And 95% of people didn't get the complete right answer. So we're going to walk through this very simple way. We're going to look at the game flow and we're going to think about the downsides of Sky Toss. Because of the three races in StarCraft, Protoss units are the most powerful on average. They're also the most expensive. They're also the ones that take the longest to build. They're also the slowest on average. So for you, as a happy Zerg, how do you confront that? How do you fight a Protoss player that's making the strongest units in the game? I'm trying to fight for that air superiority. I'm gonna show you. Just doing a normal build. Nothing really out of the ordinary here. Overlord scouting over the natural. Oscar's gonna go. Try to get a scout of the front. Amazing. Astounding. 20 Overlord. Droning up. Gonna take a third base. And for anyone who doesn't know, the power spike for Zerg is three hatches injected. Two base Zerg against Protoss, let's just say, for people playing the video game, it's hot garbage. It's just terrible. You have no power spike. Protoss can make probes faster than you can make drones off two bases because of Chrono Boost versus injects. But when Zerg has three bases injected, then they can slam out workers at a stupidly fast rate. Something like 15 drones at a time, easy peasy. So I've got my four links, we're going to push this probe off. And Oscar the Overlord is just floating over this base. And what do we see? None other than a Stargate at the front. This is a clue. This is a clue. There are some builds that maybe just put a Stargate in the wall, and they have an Oracle to be safe, and all that. So we don't know for sure that it's going to be a committed Sky Toss play yet. But we do know that we're Zerg, and we do know that three bases injected is fucking strong. So we're going to focus on that. We're going to try not to be supply blocked. Making that overlord on time. 36 supply block. A lot of times that's why you lose. Later on your units get stormed, but if you go to the replay and your supply block at 36 for a long time, that's your biggest problem. So please fix it. We see a chrono boosted void ray first. And Oscar, being the curious overlord that he is, wants to go look at the gases here. And what does he see? None other than a simulator that's made before 3 minutes 30. 3 minutes 30 is a magical time in the game. That's when a lot of people take more gas. That's when Zerg tends to refill their gas in the main base because their mineral income is really picking up. But there's an issue here. This was taken even before 3 minutes 30. A standard Protoss macro build usually takes it around 3.30 to 3.50. If you're in lower leagues, you could add some time to that if you want to. There are some players who don't know when to take their gases, so you can't always read too much into it, but we'll say this is a second clue. The first clue is Void Ray Chrono Boosted. The second clue is this assimilator was taken super early. The third clue is this is a full wall off. It's fully walled, which makes it really hard to shade this adept out of the base, doesn't it? Yep. So Oscar's going to just keep looking in here. And I'm making another Overlord. I should make an additional one to avoid being supply blocked. That would be good. I may be supply blocked. Oh dear. I'm going to be supply blocked. Making one more Overlord. Actually, it might be fine. As soon as Oscar left, there's going to be a fleet beacon there. And whenever I've asked questions, like, you just identified that it's Sky Toss, what do you do? People talk about units that attack, which is, it's wrong. You make drones faster than you could possibly imagine. Drones are potential for units over time. The drone is the macro boss unit. The unit that doesn't really get the praise that it should. It's the hardworking unit that is just chipping away at these mineral patches, retrieving this and bringing it to the swarm so that it can grow strong and fast. The drone is the key here. 
And when we see a void ray and a super fast gas, I'm not afraid of the zealot all in. I'm not thinking it's going to be a force field all in. I'm not worried about super fast glaive adepts because I saw there was no research on this. And there's a full wall off here. So that means I can drone to 70 plus just from this information alone. So my whole mindset right now is, all right, you just gave me free reign to macro as fast as I want to. And there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. If you send three to four void rays at me and I have five to seven queens, you're gonna do zero damage. You're not gonna be able to kill anything. Maybe you kill one queen at the cost of two void rays, but that's really bad. So we've got drone production. How much drone production can we manage? We've got overlords coming out, two queens at a time, and this is what your production tab should look like. Once you identify that it's sky toss, queens and drones. I'm just gonna take my vision here and you could kind of see what this macro flow looks like. I'm not even taking lair. Now I'm taking lair. I'm not worrying too much about upgrades and all kinds of other stuff because what am I looking to do? Queens and drones. Queens and drones. Whenever my base spills over 16 workers, then I'll take some gases. This third base is almost saturated already. Queens are spreading creep. I'm making nothing but drones. Nothing but drones. Queens, drones, and overlords are up to 64. And the Protoss is going to be falling behind in workers now. Because they walled themselves off. They have 44. There's a carrier out. But a single carrier can't do shit. It can't. There are no upgrades. And this is a critical mass unit. If it gets to a whole bunch of carriers later on, yeah, you're going to be in a big problem. But right now, the limiting factor for Protoss is they have zero ways to harass me. Which means I can do this. Fourth base at five minutes. And then what are we going to do? Keep making queens and drones. I'm going to take a spire because I know that I can explode out a whole bunch of corruptors super fast. I sent this ling over here. We can see gas at the third. Another clue that it's sky toss. Confirming once again. And then we see a void ray. I didn't see the carrier yet. And there's another carrier on the way. This space is over 16 workers. This space is over 16 workers, both gases. This space is over 16 workers as well. If you have nine out of 16 at a base, that's your biggest problem. You wanna think about each base that you have as a huge source of value over time. And if you're not saturating your base properly and you've got eight out of 16 on minerals, I've described that like you're paying the lease to own a store that's your business and you're only stocking half the shelves and the rest of them are empty. It's just a waste of space and it's a waste of your money. You've defended this location, you've established it with the hatch and the extractors, but you haven't stocked it properly. So I'm going for infestation pit here and I'm going for carapace as soon as my spire is done. How many workers do we have? We have 79 workers against 57. That's ridiculous. And we have all these queens here. So if the opponent were to attack with their carriers and void rays, they would lose and they would have to go home. We're just droning up with complete freedom. Sky Toss is so nice to play against. It's really nice. It's basically just a, a macro race. So you have to identify that the Protoss is giving you all the freedom in the world. And then you take that by going to 85 workers, 11 queens, Carapace on your Spire, keep all the bases injected, don't be supply blocked. And then production tab, what do you do? Hive and 10 Corruptors. Yes, Void Rays counter Corruptors, but Protoss is going to have a really difficult time countering 200 supply with 100 supply. Check it out. Macro hatch, because we can. 17 Corruptors in one wave. Refilling the gas, because there's a silly adept. And if I have extra minerals, I can make some lings if I want to. Making an Ultra Cavern. Ultra Cavern is usually really bad against Protoss, but if Protoss doesn't have Robotics Facility, then it's pretty good. They're really tanky and they can absorb the Interceptor hits really effectively. The Protoss is building Void Rays three at a time. 
you might think to yourself, uh-oh, that's going to be tough for these corruptors. Nope, doesn't matter. Zerg units are supposed to be bad. That's the whole point. They're bad units that go fast and they're built fast. We swarm. That's why it's called the swarm. This is a swarm of corruptors. These corruptors go in. They go in and they kill a unit. And then when the super beam happens, sometimes you pull back, but sometimes you just have way too much. And now we have total free reign over the map. We can focus these carriers down. Focusing the void rays down. 77 workers harvesting away. We see the fourth base there. And I'm just continuing to produce what? Corruptors. Melee upgrade. Attack on the spire. Ultra armor. Injecting everything. And now they're toast. Even the queens are showing up to heal the corruptors and help out. Queens counter void rays. They're not the best off creep, but when you've dealt this much damage, they may as well just conclude the match. You see that? You heard it here, folks. Sky Toss is super easy to beat, but people have the wrong idea. That's why they lose. You make it look easy? That's because it is easy. But people are thinking about step four when they don't even know what step one is. <laughs>